Hello, it's Kalanj Grace here, and welcome to the third episode of How to Make a Hackintosh. Uh, today, we're going to be doing the most hard, most challenging part of making the Hackintosh is installing Mountain Lion onto it and getting it all to work. So, uh, sit back, get prepared, and enjoy. Okay, so the very first step of this tutorial is we're going to be taking Mountain Lion and sticking it onto a USB so we can boot off of it and install it onto our Hackintosh. Now, uh, we're going to need a few different things. We're going to need a Mac computer, so if that's your Mac or your friend's Mac, I know it's kind of ironic that we're building a Mac and you need a Mac, but you're going to need a Mac. So there are workarounds that you can Google if you really, really have no access to a Mac, but uh, you're also going to need an 8 gigabyte USB or more. And we're also going to need this software off Tony Mac's x86 website, and links will be in the description. Okay, so now we can click on Downloads, press Software, and we're going to be downloading an application called UniBeast. Now, what this does, it takes Mountain Lion, and we'll actually extract it onto our USB, and also install all the bootloaders that we're going to need to actually boot this thing off a non-Mac computer. So, uh, once you open it up, make sure that you have Mountain Lion bought from the App Store and also in your Applications folder, because uh, you'll actually search for Mountain Lion app uh, in your Applications folder. So, if you have not bought it or if it's not in the Applications folder, it will not work. So now we can press next. Uh, and at this point, we can actually select the USB uh, that we want to install it on. Uh, just make sure it's over 8 gigabytes. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. Uh, but yeah, it'll probably take around half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on your USB speed. So be prepared to wait. Okay, so the very first step is to turn off your Hackintosh, plug in the USB, and we're actually going to be booting up our Hackintosh and waiting for this message right here to pop up. Uh, it's going to say which button to press what to get where. Uh, so we're going to try to get into the BIOS. So for me, I had to press the delete button to get into the BIOS. Yours will probably be something different. And then this is the BIOS right here. Now yours will probably look very different. I actually have a mouse, which most don't have mice, um, but mine does. Now what we're going to be looking for is the uh, boot order. So under for mine, it's under... Uh, BIOS features and it's right here. So boot option. I'm going to put my USB at the very very top Save and exit Now when we reboot our computer instead of booting off the hard drive or SSD It's actually going to boot off our USB, which is what we want Okay, so if you did everything correctly, this is the screen that you should see right now now it shows you all the bootable devices I know that mine is called untitled one. So I know that's the one we want to boot off of. Now, you can just start off by pressing enter, hoping that it boots up, but probably it won't. Uh, we'll probably need to use boot flags, so uh, that's what I was talking about earlier. You probably want to print off a list of them or have a computer beside you. This is probably the hardest part of the whole video. You just have to troubleshoot. You just have to try all the different boot flags until it works. Now, uh, some of the ones that I have to use, and to use boot flags, you just start typing. So I have to use C plus equals one. This limits the CPU to one. This is for all the LG 2011 um, CPUs that don't support power management. We will be fixing that later on, but for now, we just have to use that. It will make our computer slow, but once we fix it, there should be no problem. Now, the next one is NPCI equals zero X 3000. And this has to do with graphics. So it's a very common one. Most people actually have to use this one. So uh, better off start trying to use that one. Uh, next is uh, hyphen V. And basically what this is, is it's called verbose mode. Now, what that is, is when you boot up, it'll actually show you each thing that's happening as it boots up. So it's very handy when you run into errors. You can simply Google the last line that it gets stuck on. It also lets you know if your computer is hanging or something like that. So you don't just see an Apple sign loading for like... 60 minutes because it might be stuck. It'll let you know. So you definitely want to use that one. Next one is hyphen X and that's safety mode. Oops, not equals X. Hyphen X. Uh, safety mode and the one I, I also had to use, use kernel cache equals no. Now, uh, when you don't use the kernel cache, it'll actually take a lot longer to boot up. And if we actually start booting up right now, it'll actually ha have to load all the files. Now, later on, uh, you probably want to look up how to rebuild your cache if you had to use that boot flag uh, and then it will basically make your boot up 10 times faster. So you can see that it's reading all the files. That's because we're not using the kernel cache. Okay, so now that it's finally booted up, we can go through all these steps. Um, if you ha don't have Wi-Fi, it's not the end of the world. You can always plug it in Ethernet at this point and get Wi-Fi working later on. Okay, so now that you're actually in your Hackintosh, we're going to need to download and install just a few things from Tony Mac's website. So head over to the downloads, go to software, and scroll down. We're going to be downloading something called MultiBeast to make sure you're logged in at this point. And we're going to be getting the one for Mountain Lion. So you can download that. I already have it in my applications folder. And we can open it up. 
Now, the very first time you ever open up an application that's not from the Mac App Store, you're going to get this error that it's an unidentified developer. Uh, to get by that, you just go to System Preferences, Security, unlock it, and select Anywhere. So now that we're done that, it should open up. Okay, so this just explains a few things you can read. Uh, press Continue here. And here we have a whole bunch of different options and check marks. Um, so this is the point where it really helps if you found an online tutorial of how to uh, make your Hackintosh for your motherboard because it will tell you which ones to click and which ones will work. Because there's lots and lots of different things here. Um, not all of them work and a lot of them will actually mess up your Hackintosh. So it's a lot of trial and error. The very first two things here didn't work for me, but uh, they're automated in installations so it will automatically install all these different things. And that didn't work for me. Um, but if it works for you, that's great. Then you don't have to do very much. Uh, the next one here is user DSDT. DSDTs are a little file uh, that's on your computer that basically tells your Hackintosh how to work with your motherboard. So if you can find a DSDT for your motherboard, that really helps. Now moving on to drivers and bootloaders. This is the way to do it manually. I highly suggest that you do this because then you know what you're installing. Uh, if you want a reference of what you should install, just look at the Easy Beast things and it'll actually tell you all the different things it installed and you can try each one, but I'll be going over it right now. So let's start with drivers. Uh, so for most of the stuff you don't want to just start off with, you want to just do the mandatory stuff first, then come back and try stuff like audio and disc and graphics. Uh, but if you were to do audio, you just select audio and you find your codec and if you're using a DSTT or not. Uh, so here's the different codecs, you click it and it will automatically install it. Uh, next we have disc, so we have a trim enabler for all those SSDs out there. A few more options here for SSDs and SATA ports. Uh, for graphics, if you have one of those graphics cards, and if you want to um, unlock OpenCL, uh, but don't do that yet. Um, over here we have some stuff that we have to do just to boot up. So you need to install fake SMC, which is mandatory to boot up um, without flags or without all those flags that we were using. So make sure you download that. If you download the plugins, it will basically allow you to monitor your CPU. Um, but I found that the, the GPU sensor didn't work with my GPU, so I'd actually go and find it and delete it. Moving on, we have no CPU power, power management, and we need this for most boards. All the ones that don't have uh, power management working with the Hackintosh, you're going to need to download this. If you had to use C plus equals 1, this is the fix for it. So if you download that, you won't need to use C plus equals 1 anymore. Moving on to network, if you have one of those network cards, uh, system. If you don't want to use uh, null PC mount management, you can use this patched version. So instead of replacing it, it'll actually patch it, and it explains what it does here. Under bootloaders, we're going to need a bootloader called Chimera, and this is basically what was on our USB. So it'll install it onto our hard drive so we can boot up into our operating system without the need of our USB. I highly suggest that you go and find the latest version of Chimera because this is 1.11 and the newest one is quite a bit newer and it works better with the CPUs, uh, the newer CPUs. Uh, going to customization, we have boot options. These are all the different flags that we typed in. We can do it automatically. So, for example, verbose mode, where we don't really want to type it in every single time. We can check mark that. And I'll actually add these two things to a file, uh, our boot file that's in our extra folder. And it will basically, so we don't have to type it in every time. So it's really handy. There's some stuff here about generating uh, CPU states. If you have the newest version of Chimera, it will actually uh, generate the states for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And there's a few fixes here if you ran into um, some problems. Under system definitions, we have all the different... This is basically how we want to identify our Hackintosh. So they suggest that you do Mac Pro 3.1, so I'm just going to be doing that. They all, uh, they all work differently, and they all... Uh, benchmark differently so you have to pick the very best one so you can go and try different ones here and see which one works best for you under SSDT uh, this is if you have want to overclock or if you want to correctly identify your CPU if it's not correctly identified uh, so you can overclock it up to uh, 4.2 gigahertz which is what I'm at right now but there are ways around getting even higher than that uh, under themes here we have some themes for the our um, our Chimera bootloader there's also more online so if you don't if you don't want the default look you can download one of those themes and I think that's it so uh, now you just go through and you try to get audio working if if your Hackintosh correctly boots anyways I guess that's the end of this video I hope you guys enjoyed it I might make more in the future but right now this is the end of the series uh, let me know if you want more videos I might make some I really enjoyed it hope you guys enjoy your Hackintoshes and I wish you guys good luck anyways that's all from Technology Crazy goodbye